Hey, what up, tech fam? So today is the first series for my AI news update of the week. So we're going to start strong with uh, Llama 2. Um, it just dropped, and I'm so excited about this software. Um, and it's not even about, like, the features, but it is so much deeper um, than many people realize. So let's start with the basics. So there are three model sizes, and I have everything written down because there's, like, so much stuff that is going on. So the models start at 7 billion, 13 billion, and then 70 billion, which is insane. Um and they did partner with uh, Meta, which is the one that created Llama 2, and they partnered with Microsoft. And you're thinking like, well, ChatGPT is also by Microsoft partnering with OpenAI. And it's like, yeah, they're kind of like double dipping. Um, so the interesting part about this um, is that with Llama 2, they're actually going to use it as an open source software, and it includes... Uh, for research purposes. And as a research scientist, I mean, that is extremely exciting for me uh, because there are some issues with chat GPT, making up references, making up authors. Um, so yeah, so I can't really use chat GPT always for uh, technical purposes because it's like I'm doing double the work trying to verify that the references that they gave me is accurate. So this is extremely exciting. Uh, so you can download it, the, the model Llama 2 directly from Open, um, not Open AI. They're already connected uh, from Meta directly. Uh, you can also go to replicate.com. Uh, you can also go to perplexity.ai to download the model and, and test it out. All right. So what is the big deal? Like what is making me so excited about the software? And I think it's uh, the business aspect of it because I think so many people don't realize the timeline of AI and how quickly things are converting um, into our society. So about three months ago, I made a chart, a projection to say, okay, well, the maximum amount of time that I thought things would happen would be, let's say a year and a half, right? Because we thought maybe there would be more policies, laws, and regulations. Um, that's not happening so far. And it only took three months. So from an expectation of a year and a half to three months, the speed at uh, which AI is converting uh, into the corporate level, into the university level, that's when you're going to start seeing a trickle down effect into our entire society. Because so many people are wondering like, well, when are we actually going to see, you know, AI actually start infiltrating through every aspect of our businesses, you know, our school systems, um, and it's like, well, Llama 2 could, it could be, <laughs> it could really be that one. And why is that? Well, number one, Microsoft has the software called Azure, and they are actually the cloud provider for Llama 2. And it's like, wait a minute, uh, that's a little interesting. And why is that? Well, Azure is uh, connected to businesses, business to business. Um, and they have 722 million users. Um, that is that is the gateway to introducing itself uh, within society quickly because the systems are already in place. So I think that partnership is really what um, could be the catalyst for us to really start seeing how quickly AI is actually going to be uh, within our society. Um, so it's extremely exciting. And then there are other words I'm not going to use. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's it, it's so much deeper than I think people realize. Um, because how it affects the economy with job creation. Many people aren't talking about job losses. Um, that's a story for another day. Um, so what do I think actually about Llama 2 versus, for example, with ChatGPT? So as a researcher, um, one of the main things that we have to do is actually remove bias, right? So we want to make sure that we focus on the math, not our emotions, and just the results. So in ChatGPT, it's pretty easy for me to 
uh, create simulations. It's extremely easy to try to remove limits by using certain vocabulary. Um, Llama 2 said, uh, no. <laughs> it literally, I try to give it like 10 different commands and every single time it was like declined, you're not bypassing anything. So it's a good thing that um, they, it does have a lot of ethical limitations. Um, it does have a lot of uh, limitations when it comes to human oversight, because I try to focus on what we use on the back end as far as algorithm design and analysis of the research sciences. And that's when we use regression models. So I wanted to focus more on how we would use that, just the math, without uh, the human element. And it was like decline. You cannot do that. We're not going to allow you to do that. So I would have to see if I can adjust it on the back end by myself. But if we're just looking at the model just straight out the box, um, it did give me a few issues. All right. So, yeah, um, I think I have to do like 10 more videos just on Llama 2 because there are so many things that we have to talk about. It's, um, yeah, it's mind blowing. Um, all right. So the next thing that Meta did they created, and I think this is pronounced chameleon. I mean, you guys know these companies, they put letters and numbers and we don't know how to pronounce it. So it's spelled C-M-3-L-E-O-N. So I'm thinking they're trying to call it chameleon, but it is a text to image tool and it is multimodal. And according to them, it's five times the efficiency of the competition. So it's going to be interesting to see how they actually jump into the generative AI art uh, industry and uh, really create something that could surpass, you know, mid journey. I don't know if it's there yet because mid journey is, you know, my favorite, I'm a little biased for that, but um, we'll see how it turns out. Got to test it. Um, a third tool, AI tool that they came out with and optimized actually um, is the automatic speech recognition software. And uh, it's also, you can find more information about it um, by searching uh, casual conversation two. And they also have a research paper called Improving Fairness and Robustness in End-to-End -end Speech Recognition Through Unsupervised Clustering. I know that is a lot. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, basically, they're optimizing how these AI tools are going to mimic uh, human speech. Let's take a pause for a sec because that's, um, yeah, it's we're, we're getting down to um, what they call an utterance. Um, we're getting down to the like the milliseconds, right, um, where they can start mimicking people. And according to the research paper, it says it can be used for voice assistance, messaging, calling, and music capture. And I think if you've been watching anything with AI and music and you've seen how many uh, different artists are actually upset that all of these other text-to-speech tools are able to mimic their voice. Um, Meta's jumping in and it was like, no, we're, we're about to perfect it. So it's interesting to see how it's going to affect, for example, with voice cloning um, and how they're even going to allow individuals to even try to use the software. But, you know, there's always going to be that one person that's going to find a way to try to use the technology for a purpose that's maybe not intended, but this is interesting. Um, another kind of fun thing that I saw uh, this week is with the Hollywood AI strike. Um, now, before we, cause this is not, we're not trying to do gossip, but we have to do, you know, a bit of research and there are kind of like two sides. So the first side is that actors were upset. You're probably going to see a lot of, you know, clickbaity titles with that that the actors were saying that the studios were trying to basically scan their likeness, scan them, and that they would then own their likeness forever in perpetuity, that they could do things to monetize without their consent. And it's like, well, uh, reality is getting crazier than fiction. Um, now, when I did a little bit of research, uh, according to a partial kind of contract uh, information that was released by AMPTP. I did not write down what that company or the studio, whatever, uh, stood for. Um, they basically said that that's not true. That's not the full capacity of what they're doing. Uh, they were basically saying that it was going to be used maybe for background actors. Um, it 
their likeness would only be used maybe for um, that specific project. And if they did want to maybe rene rene renegotiate um, for another project, they would be contacted. They would be uh, paid for uh, the replica of their likeness. But even that in itself is, uh, it's crazy. <laughs> to say the least, how quickly things are advancing. And everybody was talking about the new Black Mirror episode um, called Joan is Awful, when it was basically this exact same scenario where um, this person, uh, basically, they were like, oh, she did not even realize that she signed off on um, using the software, and now they were replicating her likeness as a TV show. And it's like, well... I don't know uh, what's going to happen with that. So, but I thought it was an interesting, you know, topic to check out. All right. So next up, um, of course, we have to talk about Elon Musk and XAI. Now, before I definitely have to do a bit more research on this so that I can do this justice, but I'll give you guys a quick quote um, from the introduction video that he did on Twitter. And he just said, basically, the purpose of XAI is to build a good AGI to understand the universe. Um, he wants it to be curious, to be truth seeking, um, because he feels that's the safest way that it would function as far as creating an AGI. And an AGI, if you don't know what that is, is think about consciousness, that a um, artificial intelligence would have the, the human metrics that we have you know, empathy and all of those feelings. Um, the good thing that I did get from his introduction video is that he is focused on AI regulation. He is focused on safety. We'll see how that goes. Um, another thing that I do want to bring up, this was earlier this month, but I do still think it's relevant, um, is that when Elon talked about uh, limiting the data scraping on Twitter, and it's like, I need for you guys to be more careful about what information you put online. Um, and I think we're going to see more companies starting to limit uh, these actions as far as getting that information from social media. Because look, um, as a professional research scientist, we use software that we can acquire data, you know, a decade of your life in, you know, 30 seconds. Um, with AI, it makes it extremely easy. So you, you guys have to start being a bit more careful as far as what you're putting online, um, especially with this new technology that's coming out. It's extremely easy to, to do things that maybe you don't want done. Um, next up in a chatbot race, um, Apple's getting in the game. Uh, so now they're launching Apple GPT, codename Ajax. Uh, so, yeah, I think they're just trying to compete, you know, ChatGPT, Bard, Bing. Um, we have, seems like every company is now creating their own. So it's extremely, it's going to get hectic. But the good thing is competition does drive um, excellence. It drives perfection. It drives new innovation. So we're going to see how much better things get. Now, the consequences of those things, uh, I don't think I should probably mention that right now. But um you can check it out. Anyway, next up, we have a new update with ChatGPT and their custom requests. And this is a big deal. And it's because I think now we're going to start seeing how these companies are trying to take it now to the corporate level, right? They're going to take it to the university level um, and a professional level, because as research scientists, we've always had... Uh, we function without limits. We create our own databases. We create our own parameters. We create our own um, limitations in how we access data. So now what they're doing is uh, that you can now adjust the information by level of expertise, congruency of grammar, job roles, and character sheets. Um, so what does this mean? Basically, it's like a point and click. Now you don't have to be a professional and say, well, let me figure out what that person would ask in that industry. They're going to uh, start helping you to be able to, well, I actually don't know if they're going to have like the user interface ready yet, but 
uh, maybe just the ability to start categorizing it. Yeah. So let me not get ahead of myself. Maybe they're not at that level yet, but eventually that's where it's going to go. So for example, if you look at Adobe uh, Firefly, they already structured everything in a drop down menu with, you know, their user interface is always amazing. So uh, you can also look at mid journey. You don't need prompts. You know, you just drop a picture and it'll give you the prompt. It'll tell you what it is. So you don't have to do the research for it. And that's why I always tell people prompt engineering is going to be obsolete soon because they're going to try to take it to the professional level. And we don't need that. We create our own parameters. So it's going to start turning into a task related structure. And that's going to be more efficient. That's going to be the level where, you know, they're at the university um, and corporate level. So but that's where it's going to go to. Um Let's see. The interesting thing um, that we do want to focus on this is that when we're looking at ChatGPT, for example, in comparison to Llama 2, it's the, um, it's the, it's the limit removal. Um, so I'm wondering, since Microsoft is involved with both, if they're going to try to maybe keep ChatGPT towards more of the, the general population, entrepreneurs, startups, things like that. And maybe with Llama 2, they're going to try to take it more towards the research university um, level and above as far as business to business. So that's going to be an interesting way um, how they're going to diversify to make sure that they actually capture the entire market. And I don't think people really are getting that. Uh, Microsoft is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Another day we'll discuss that. And then, of course, we also have to talk about Anthropics Claude 2, another chatbot that um, you can compare against ChatGPT is another great alternative. Um, so right now, some of the, the two main things that I noticed, um, right now they're saying that Claude 2 uh, might be better at writing than ChatGPT. I do want to do a couple more simulations to see if it's actually going to match my expectations. Um, but right now, for example, ChatGPT is better at quantitative results. Um, so think any kind of engineering, coding, things like that. So, oh man, I mean, these updates are, they're so much bigger because now once they start moving towards like the business side and the economy side, and when we look at the AI timeline, like I told you guys, I projected more of a year and a half because I expected laws, policies, and regulations to be put in place before they started, you know, dropping things with business to business and for research purposes. Um, but without that, they did it in three months. And now I think it might be difficult for these policies to catch up because by then they're going to be so integrated into our economy. It's going to, it's going to be an issue people. Um, so we are going to see how that turns out. But yeah, so these are some of my favorite AI updates for the week. And I'll continue bringing you guys these updates. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm extremely excited. I think I have to make like 10 to 20 videos just on Llama 2 because, yeah, it's wild. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.